So it's the 21st of January, 10 days to go until the gate shuts in Hobart. And uh, I've been out of action for a couple of days, but thanks Lutz for carrying on there. And uh, some interesting things going on. Of course, uh, Elliot is in town in Fremantle getting organised with his boat and uh, riding his bike everywhere. We uh, uh, weren't able to hook up with anything like a, a main interview with him uh, while he was there. So we will do a one-on-one -on -one with him uh, on a split screen interview when he gets to, to a computer. I've got to send some messages and get that organised and uh, we'll try and do that in the next few days. So <clears throat> once he um, gets gets everything uh, uh, back into running normally in civilization, I'm sure he's having a bit of fun and he's got some friends coming over soon so he'll uh, enjoy that and we'll keep you updated on progress. So uh, the good news here for the tracker is that all the weather seems to be down south so that's good, no one's getting hassled too much. And uh, we'll start off by, and of course, uh, uh, Jeremy and uh, Ian were able to get underway. Unfortunately, we weren't there to see him goodbye, but uh, other people did that for us. So that's all kind of cool. And we'll talk about that in a minute as well. But uh, for now, the uh, big issue is Guy uh, and the, um, the prospect of him actually making the gate. It, it, in my opinion, he's not going to make the gate. Uh, he's got a bit over 2,000 miles to go if we step this out. You can see he's just come out of the no-go zone, so that's kind of nice. And he's uh, got reasonably good sailing weather. Uh, but yeah, there's nearly 2,000 miles there, so he'd have to average 200 miles a day. Uh, it's going to go close, but it is a very delicate subject. Uh, the idea of the gate uh, and closing it on the 31st of January is simply to make sure that any entrance got a realistic chance of getting around Cape Horn. Uh, before the end of March. Uh, weather starts to decrease dramatically after that. And so it's a, a, a risk part of our risk mitigation and assessment on what's safe and what's not safe, in our opinion, in terms of an event organiser. And uh, that's the rule we have. We're not likely to change that rule, even if Guy was just two days late. You know, he, he, that's what they're about. So, um, so anyway, it looks like if that's the case, there's a post below this that explains the um the reality of that and how we manage that and then it's up to the individual you know guy can do what he likes and uh, he's determined to carry on and good on him you know that's up to him but um and we look forward to uh, seeing him back in the sub alone you know he'll be at the prize giving he's all part of the event everyone that's that started the race is is going to be on the on the podium effectively because it was a big challenge to get there so um so we look forward to that and we'll keep everyone informed on how they can follow guy uh, on his tra on personal tracking page, you know, their manager and team will be running all of that. Uh, and we'll update the same as we do. In fact, we're just saying today, we're not sure where Arnold is right now. <laughs> so he should be just about to arrive in the Caribbean. But even his managers don't quite know what's happening when he gets there. But when he gets there, again, with Arnold, we'll try and get some information and, and do a bit of a wrap-up interview. He's been at sea for a long time. So uh, that's kind of fun as well. And... Um, then, uh, yeah, okay, so Guy currently is doing uh, 7.6 knots. Now, if you held that 24 hours a day <laughs> for the next 10 days, might go close. <laughs> but anyway, let's let's just see how it pans out. And uh, his weather's looking pretty good. Uh, no real surprises there if we, if we drag that forward now for a couple of days. We'll pull it forward till tomorrow. He's got a nice southwesterly, so that's going to keep his speed up. Uh, if we go through to the 23rd, again, he's got plenty of favourable breezes, so he'll be doing sixes, six and a half. It's going to be a close run thing, but but it's uh, highly unlikely he'll manage that. And especially, I'm not even sure whether he'll actually um, even try to come up to Hobart if I were him with his uh, you know sort of stated aim. There's probably no point because it usually takes a couple of days of diversion you know by the you've seen what happens you know you get local interaction with the weather calms all that sort of stuff it just cost him another couple of days to get up and another couple of days to get out so we're fully expecting him to sail below tassie and, and carry on and then it'll be, there's, he is not affected by anything after that he doesn't have to worry about the no-go zones he can use his satellite phone he can get weather routing he can break out the gps uh, he's free to do whatever he wants and i'm sure he'll have a great ride back to uh, back to Le Sable de Lone, hopefully. Anyway, so Guy's looking all right there uh, with weather for the next few days. Now, if we look at uh, Jeremy and uh, uh, Jeremy here, he's just had a bit of a slow start, uh, 5.3 knots now, he's moving and uh, you know making good progress. He's out clear, so he'll have a good sleep tonight. And uh, Ian is, if we pull this right up, he left about 9.30 this morning. You may have seen the photo there that uh, Jane was able to take. 
um, and he's slowly making his way out. Uh, he'll be out tonight. It's still uh, it's seven o'clock local time here, so he's still got nearly sort of two and a half hours of daylight. So he'll get out and clear, and uh, happy to be there. He had a very good rest. We know that got got quite a bit of work done, and he's completely psyched on his way to uh, to Cape Horn. So if we just drop this back, we'll look at the weather that's going to impact uh, these guys in the next couple of days um, okay so there's 24 hours later it's going to go light uh, this will be okay for them dipping down they'll, they'll come down here but they're not going to make fast time straight away so that's in one day we'll go forward to the next day uh, then they've got a nice breeze both of them a uh, north northeasterly so they'll just be you know making good speeds fives and sixes i think jeremy will be out to prove a point now with a clean bum and uh, as long as they don't go too far south into this they uh, they've got a few days of nice weather there um, yeah it's all looking pretty good and it looks like there's a kick coming that's that's four days from now uh, five six days Oop, no, they've got a high there so depending on where they are they might slow down but anyway no big big blows for the moment so back to today then we'll uh, come across here uh, Goog's been pretty happy. He's been making good time. You can see the big straight lines there. He had a good following breeze and uh, no complaints now. 5.8 knots heading directly to the corner of the zone. A good solid sou'wester. So uh, he's, he's uh, very happy with that. And we'll see what the um, projection is. Bring him forward to uh, tomorrow. That will continue. Yep, great breeze, westerlies. And if that high above him stays in place... Uh, that's in the 23rd. Yep, more westerlies. So he's happy. There's two days. We go through to uh, the third day. Beautiful. That's a, a, a pretty much a sou'wester, but that's all solid. So he's got a nice run now. We'll take it through one more time. Getting through. Yep, he's looking good. He's going to have four or five days of uh, very nice sailing. And uh, uh, I think you'll see his tweets pick up a bit as well. Interesting that Bernard Matessi is sticking true to form. He's running right along the edge of the zone. He knows what happens if he goes south. So uh, it's um, it's actually quite fascinating watching their course back then. They're in the Roaring Forties. That's what they did in those days. In fact, he's south of the Roaring Forties. So I put that in. You can see Forties uh, are quite a bit higher. But anyway, that's all fine. Uh, and uh, so right now today, Kirsten... Uh, is making 6.8 knots. She sped up a bit. They're all doing 6.6, .6, all three of them, in the last four hours, but now 6.8. Avalish has sped up a bit, so he's a couple of, he's 0.3 of a knot faster than, uh, than Kirsten. She's got heavier weather back there, solid northerly. Uh, and Simon is, uh, he was also doing 6.8, but now he's doing 5.6, so he slowed down a little bit. And if we come back to this, You'll see it's all under the influence of this high. Simon's at the front, or actually he's on the top of this this low here. So it, it's a, it is a different system. And uh, Kirsten and Avalish are on the back of this high, more or less. Oh, well, actually they're mixing it up a bit. But um, anyway, let's see what happens if we toggle this through now and see how it's going to progress. This is uh, the northerlies coming through. So this system that's just impacted Gug is going to come up behind them, but give them good solid breezes. So Avalish and Kirsten have got good breezes. That's going into 24 hours from now. That's a day and a half. If they stay low, they're going to still hold the breeze, but it'll it'll lighten off a little bit. Yep, that's going to lighten and slow a bit. Whereas Simon's got a good solid breeze, so he'll keep sailing. This is what happens when you get a big split like this. But um, so be it. Now again, you know, I think I've explained so many times what this. Uh, no go zone is about. Uh, there's no compromise there. It's all about uh, exposure to any rescue assets that have to come down. The MRCCs don't want you to go too far south. It's harder to come and get them if there's a problem. So um, that's a, you know that's a feature. And interesting, a lot of people were surprised to see that we actually go deeper than the Vendée Globe. You know they're up at up at uh, seven. Uh, what is it? Forty six, and we're on forty seven. Yeah, we're forty seven south over here. They're at forty six south. They've got to stay up higher. So, um, you know, it's um, a reasonable situation. So there's not going to be a lot of big changes there with the weather for these guys. Um, 
you know, in terms of giving anyone a break, anyone to get through, but it's a long way to the finish. You know, everyone forgets about this. When they turn the corner, it sounds pretty outrageous and it is absolutely going to be hard for for um, Abolition and Simon, and uh, Kirsten to make a gain on, on um, Simon. As I predicted a couple, of, a couple of days ago, I said the big break would happen in the next two days, so here it is now. It's 1,129 and it'll probably stretch out to 1,200. So, uh, so that's pretty much going to plan. But after that, once Simon's over the edge, he can pretty, you know, go wherever he wants and then things start to happen because these systems coming through uh, around Cape Horn, they, they squash up, you know, the, the land mass here starts to squash up. They often get a little bit smaller and, uh, you know, it, 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 there's still opportunities for Kirsten and uh, Abolish to make some gains, especially once they get out of here and turn the corner in the Atlantic, you'll see what happens. It's a, it's just snakes and ladders again and, and there'll be winners and losers once again, but that's yacht racing, so, uh, so part of the course. Okay, I think uh, we've pretty much covered off on all of that. Simon is uh, just coming up to, or he's just passed the longitude of uh, Point Nemo, uh, which is explained in that post down the bottom. It's a point on the face of the earth where it's the furthest from uh, all points of civilization, and uh, that's why they dumped the satellites there. I thought people would be interested in that. Not many people know. If you're going to target to crash things onto earth, it's not bad. There's no land there. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so... Um, but it is another another interesting uh, aspect. So, and distance to Cape Horn now for Simon is uh, distance now for Simon is okay. Two thousand miles, so a couple of weeks. That's not bad timing. So he'll be there, you know, early in uh, early in February, which is a nice time to go around. You may remember when Captain Coconut went round on his trip from Adelaide to. Uh, Adelaide to um, uh, La Sable d'Alone non-stop. That was about the time he was here and got hammered. So there's still plenty of time for action down here. But we've had, so far, Touchwood a pretty good run across uh, the Southern Ocean. Touchwood, Touchwood. Uh, but there's still a fair bit to go. If we look at, um, if we look at the ETAs now of uh, Jeremy and uh, Ian, Jeremy will be moving pretty quick because he's got a clean bum. Ian's pretty good. He's got some residual barnacles around the the quarters of the boat at the back above the waterline and uh, you know let's wait and see how f what their speeds are like but they're not going to be there until uh, you know sometime in March maybe even mid-March or something so uh, they may have some challenges ahead but that's the, the name of the game okay so we'll uh, uh, the other thing is uh, we had a few hiccups with our timelines to try and get Tapio uh, up with his discussion about his actions with Asteria losing Asteria and being rescued and so on uh, we uh, had hoped to do it uh, right now, but we had a few hiccups here. So we will uh, schedule that as soon as we can, um, and hopefully sometime this coming week uh, we'll get that up. And the same with Elliot. I'll let you know. Stay tuned, and we'll uh, see you all again.